Okay, so once again, welcome to Wellbeing Workshop. And this is our um, our last one for the month of April. And this month we have been focusing on spring cleaning. So we have already talked a lot about spring cleaning our bodies as well as our pantry, taking care of ourselves in that sense. So we're rounding it out today with one of our pharmacists, Dana, and going to be highlighting our medicine cabinet and why it's important to keep that in check. So we're going to be doing this as an interview style tonight. I'm going to be asking Dana a bunch of questions. Um, and before we get into that, though, Dana, I'm going to pass it over to you if you would like to give your um, introduction and then we'll get started. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I always love doing these things. Um, I always learn so much from our, our dietitians. So I'm always happy to hop on. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Dana Volpe. I am a pharmacist with the Giant Company. I've been with Giant for so 11 years, uh, 12 years, and um, I work out of the Westchester area. That's my my home base. But I travel around and I do a lot of vaccine clinics and wellness events. And I always love working with our our dietitians. So I'm so happy to be here. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dana. Okay. So our first question for you is, as a pharmacist, what do you keep in your medicine cabinet? All right. So there's nothing special about my medicine cabinet, I'll be honest. So um, the first and foremost, you want to think about what do you want to reach your medicine cabinet for besides your regular prescribed medications from your doctors? If you have a headache or you have um, aches and pains or a fever, you always want to make sure that you have something that you can reach on hand that is unexpired. Um, so I always have, this is a, an acetaminophen product or Tylenol. Um, I always have Tylenol in my, in my medicine cabinet. And I also um, always like ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is also a pain reliever, fever reducer, um, but this has anti-inflammatory effects. So if you have a sprained ankle or if you have any kind of inflammation going on, ibuprofen is the one that you want to reach for. Um, something else that you always want to have available, especially in the case of an emergency, is an antihistamine. So something like diphenhydramine or Benadryl. Um, this is very important to have in case anyone has an allergic reaction at your house, like a food reaction or bug bites, um, any kind of rash or, or um, uh, topical allergic reaction. You always wanna have unexpired Benadryl in your house. It's important um, to be able to reach for that really quickly. So they're like my real, my staples that you always wanna have. You wanna you want make sure that you always have those in case of an emergency. Um, I always have in my house as well, antacid. So, you know, get overindulge on, your spaghetti dinner on a Sunday and you need to reach for something for heartburn. Um, these are a personal preference. So if you like liquid, get the liquid. If you like the chewable tablets, I personally like the um, the chewy the chewy ones. So these are always in my cabinet just in case. And I also always have cough drops. So you never know if you get a scratchy throat. Um, I have kids, they like to eat them because I think they just like the taste of them. But I always have cough drops in my um, in my medicine cabinet as well. Something that we've been hearing a lot about over the past couple of years is people are coming down, they're getting sick. So hopefully we're over COVID. I don't want to hear COVID anymore, but we all, all end up with, you know, sometimes a seasonal cold or something like that. So I always have a vitamin C product in my um, cabinet. So it can be any kind of vitamin C. I like airborne or emergency. Um, this is just a nice quick boost of, of vitamin C to help you fight off anything that might be, you know, coming down the pike for you. I also, we suffer with seasonal allergies in my house, unfortunately. So I always have allergy eye drops. Um, this is Aloe. That's just my personal preference. Any of the allergy eye drops um, that you would find in your grocery store, <clears throat> excuse me, or drugstore would be completely appropriate. So that, that they are my go-tos, my, in case of emergencies, my, not my regular medications, but like what you want to just have just in case. Okay. All good um, notes there. I will say that I am in particular struggling with uh, seasonal allergies right now, hence uh, to my regulars that I have my glasses on right now, because 
I can't even put my contacts in my eyes. I am out of the allergy eye drops. So that's one that I need to restock um, in my medicine cabinet, but all good points. Um, question in chat, is airborne different from regular vitamin C we would have? So there's a couple different formulations of airborne. Um, some of them have added minerals and supplements in them. Like some have echinacea. This one in particular has, um, uh, sorry, I don't have the regular packaging, but this one I think has like echinacea and some other weird like magnesium kind of things. But the, the crux of it is the vitamin C. So the high dose vitamin C is what, is really um, helping your immune system fight off anything that's, you know, coming down the pike and um, anything else is really, hasn't been proven to be really efficacious. It's just the vitamin C. So honestly, as long as you have a high dose vitamin C product, I don't really think there's a big deal of a difference. Okay. Sounds good. Good question. Thank you. Um, keep them coming in chat if you would like. So next question, um, oh, here, another question. You have to be careful if you're on prescribed medications and using airborne at the same time. Is that accurate? So um, vitamin C um, can interact with some medications. There's, there's some, if you're on a medicine that would interact with vitamin C, you would probably know about it. And it would have to do with like changing the acidity. Um, in your stomach and you want to separate it from whatever that medication is so that you're absorbing it appropriately. Um, some people who take things like thyroid medication, if there are magnesium or um, iron or something like that in with the vitamin C, then yes, that would interact with your thyroid medication. You want to separate that by at least two to four, two to four hours, um, two hours before, or four hours after. So yes, very good question. Um, you want to make sure that it's not interacting with your regular medications. Okay. So next question is, now that you've chatted a little bit about what you keep in your medicine cabinet, do you have any general tips about how to organize that medicine cabinet? Is that important at all? Yeah. So um, you want to keep the things at the front that you want to reach for quickly. So I always have um, the Tylenol, the ibuprofen, and the um, allergy stuff like right there at the front. And that also keeps them on my radar. So I can say like, oh, hey, when's the last time I bought this? Maybe it's expired. You might want to rotate this out. So you, for me, I have a pullout shelf in my kitchen, which is my, my medication um, shelf. It's ridiculous at this point. But um, all the stuff that I would reach for normal commonly or things that I would want to reach for quickly, I would have them in the front. Other things that I have um, that I didn't mention that I do keep in my medicine cabinet are first aid products. And I like to keep my first aid stuff organized in like a container like this. Sometimes you can purchase, I think I got this at like home goods or something and I thought it was adorable, but sometimes you can purchase um, a first aid kit from a store. Like they have it all packed together, soup to nuts. I like to make my own and I keep it in there because if something happens, say, you know, my kid falls outside or somebody falls upstairs, I can go into the medicine cabinet, grab it and have everything that I need for a fall or a sprain or a cut right there, um, you know, and I can take it with me. So some of the things that I keep in there are band-aids. Um, everybody has band-aids, right? So I just keep them in my first aid section. Antibiotic ointment. This is polysporin. This is the recommended antibiotic ointment for um, cuts and, and scrapes and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, surgical wounds. Um, so I always have polysporin in my medicine cabinet. Also, um, any an itch relieving cream. So this is a hydrocortisone, a 1% hydrocortisone product. This is good for bug bites sometimes, um, minor skin rashes, um, something that, you know, you just want to have on hand just in case. I keep an ACE bandage <clears throat> or a, a elastic wrap. I have gloves in there. I keep transparent dressing. Um, this is good for minor wounds or, or burns. Um, if they're not anything that you have to go to be seen. I also keep in there um, a hot cold pack, an instant hot cold pack in case you need ice or I don't have it in my freezer ready to go. 
Um, and I also leave in there some hydrogen peroxide just in case. So that I keep behind my regular stuff that I hope I don't ever have to reach for that. But if I do, I have it all in one place and I can just take it out and get what I need out of there. Okay, yeah, great, um, great suggestion there. I know I'm in the same boat uh, with my daughter and I feel like I, I can't have enough Band-Aids on hand. Um, uh, question in chat, I see something about expiration dates. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but kind of going along the lines of, burn, of first aid, there was a question of what do you use for burn? Like, do you keep anything on hand for burn? So I actually did have a burn, <clears throat> a burn cream in there. There's kind of um, differing opinions on what you do with a burn. Really, just as long as it's not a severe burn that you would have to go to the ER for. If it's a minor burn, like a curling iron burn, we get those all the time in my house. Or you know, something little at the stove, like a, a, a you grab the pan the wrong way or something. As long as it's not um, a really severe burn, just keeping it clean, um, washing it with water, maybe even a little bit of of soap, um, keeping it really clean and dry and you can dress it. I don't think I, I think I forgot to show you, but I do also keep gauze in there just in case, um, just covering it with gauze. I used to have burn cream, but it would expire and I just didn't really see a need for it. So you can have burn cream in there. There is first aid cream it's called, or, um, for a minor burn that you would get, you know, you wouldn't need to seek help for just keeping it clean and dry and sometimes wrapping it with gauze if you know that you're going to be somewhere where it's going to be exposed to the uh, to dirt. Okay. Um, you sparked a question for me with your first aid kit. The polysporin, is that the same as neosporin? So it is actually different. So polysporin, okay. <clears throat> neosporin has an added antibiotic in it called neomycin. And what's happened through the years is since so many people have been using neosporin, we're seeing a lot of neomycin allergies. Um, so they're kind of not recommending the neosporin anymore, although it's fine if you don't have an allergy that you know to neomycin and that's what you have in your cabinet at the time, it's okay. But polysporin is the preferred antibiotic cream slash ointment um, for minor abrasions or um, cuts. Okay, yes, that's why I asked because I have allergic reactions to neosporin. Yeah. Um, so good to know. Um, I saw somebody mentioned, um, are, are you, how do you feel about the recommendation of using aloe gel for burns? Sure, aloe is fine um, as long as it's clean. And, and I don't know that aloe has an expiration date on it, but I know like I had a container of aloe that kind of went back and forth to the beach and it looked nasty. And that's nothing that I would want to put on a cut. So as long as you make sure that it's, clean and not expired if it does have an expiration date on it and the dispenser part is clean you know because you're putting that right on an open wound I think aloe is fine okay and then similar to that can the neosporin or polysporin be used on burns absolutely yes if you okay. think it looks nasty or if it's really red around the edges that's usually when we would recommend putting some kind of an antibiotic ointment on it okay and then going back to some of your go-to staples in the medicine cabinet, there was a question of what do you think about naproxen or Aleve? Is there any benefit that is different from acetaminophen or ibuprofen? So like we said, ibuprofen has anti-inflammatory properties. So um, that sometimes is good for um, sprains or muscle injuries, things like that. Naproxen um, or Aleve, I think, was there another one in there that they asked about? Oh, naproxen and Aleve, yeah. Yeah, so naproxen and Aleve um, are along the same lines as ibuprofen. They are pain relievers, fever reducers, and anti-inflammatories. So again, it's like a personal preference. For me, ibuprofen, you can repeat it every four to six hours, whereas naproxen, you really shouldn't repeat it before 12. So I always like ibuprofen because if I need to repeat, if I feel like it's not, you know, working or, or if it's wearing off, I can repeat it sooner than I, than with naproxen. So that's just why I choose ibuprofen. Okay. All right. Um, so there have been some questions about expiration dates, which is what we definitely want to dig into here. So um, why is it important to um, make sure that you're getting rid of things that are expired 
Um, there was a question specifically of, is it okay to use Benadryl or Mucinex after it expires? If you would wanna dig into that. So the, with Benadryl, it's a little complicated. <clears throat> if expired Benadryl is all you have and someone's having an allergic reaction, like a severe allergic reaction, I would say, go ahead and give it. Overall, we don't want to use expired products because over time, if, if they're beyond their expiration date on the package, they cannot be guaranteed to be effective or at the same chemical composition as they were when they were within their expiration. So that means that they can be less effective. Um, so we're taking this medication, but we're not getting the full benefit from it. So we might need to take more and that, you know, it just is, is a slippery slope with expired medicine. In most cases, is it probably okay? Yes, but it's not really a risk that we want to take. Going back to that Benadryl question, if that's all you have and someone really needs Benadryl, then I would say, go ahead and give the expired Benadryl. That's um, just on a case-by-case -case basis. But in general, we want to do this yearly spring cleaning, go through, just check your expiration dates and like I think this ibuprofen, honestly, I got it at Giant. I think the 50 count were like $2.99 or something like that. Some, you know, you, you just want to make sure you're not taking expired product because it might not be worth it to, to have it. Okay. So once we find those expired products, how could we um, dispose of them? That's a great question. So <clears throat> the number one way to ex dispose of expired products is through um, like a community take back program. So they usually have like a medication take back day. It's um, something that's, I think the DEA organizes it and some pharmacies will host it. Um, police stations host it. They'll have a big take back day. So they'll put um, some kind of a dispense. Um, a receptacle in certain areas with an attendant and you can go and drop off your expired medications and then they dispose of them however they dispose of them. I'm not sure what they do. Some uh, police stations have them all the time. So I know like in my township, one of my police departments, um, they have a receptacle in their lobby all the time. Um, so in that case, you would just remove them from their regular containers because you don't want your name on them out there, right? So like take your personal information off your bottle, take the dump the um, tablets or capsules into a bag and take them to a receptacle somewhere that is an actual take back um, through a take back program. If that is not possible, um, you can always, again, remove the tablets or capsules from their original containers and put them in something that would make them undesirable to humans or animals like coffee grounds, cat litter, dirt, um, put them in a plastic bag, mix them all together, and then you can throw it out in your regular trash. So if that's, if you can't find a take back program, um, then, you, you know, you want to do that um, and, and throw it away in the regular trash. The exception is for certain medications. If you take an opioid or an opiate pain reliever, those should not get thrown in the regular trash. Those should be flushed down the toilet. So let's say you were prescribed Percocet or oxycodone after a surgery and you have some left over, you didn't use them all. You don't want to hang on to those. They're just a danger um, and a mistake waiting to happen. You want to get rid of them. And the FDA and the CDC say the best way to do that is to flush them down the toilet. The risk to um, an accidental exposure of them being thrown in the trash to a human or an animal is much less, um, it outweighs the potential risk of it, you know, doing something in our, in our sewage system. So that's the only exception. They can be flushed or they should be flushed. Okay. And on the note of the opioids, um, how is it a good way to store those? Yeah. So this is an interesting fact. I actually found this yesterday. The CDC estimates that 50,000 children a year are hospitalized or, or go to the ER for accidental medication exposure. And a lot of those exposures are to opioids or opiates, um, which are pain medications. They're very strong pain medications. So oxycodone, morphine, hydrocodone, anything along those lines that they're opioids. Um, and they should be stored um, different than the rest of your medications because they pose such a risk for with accident, accidental exposure, excuse me. So you wanna make sure that they're in a locked container. Um, you know, if you can keep them in 
a safe or a box or somewhere that's out of the way where people not with your regular medications so that somebody doesn't accidentally pick it up and think it's Tylenol or something. So keep it completely out of the way where only the person who is prescribed it knows where it is. Um, you want to make sure that you, you keep it in its orig original package. It's not something that you want to put in a pill box or, you know, throw a few tablets in your purse because if somebody takes it, um, you know, by accident, then they can really be harmed. And you want to make sure you don't share it with people. So if you have some leftover from a surgery and your cousin is, you know, in pain because they sprain their ankle, you don't want to offer that to them. It's not appropriate. You want to never share opiate pain medication. And I think I wrote a note here and dispose of it. So if you have medication left over, if you're prescribed something for a tooth extraction or a surgery or something like that, and you have it left over, do not keep it for a rainy day. Get rid of it the way that we said, you flush it right down the toilet. Um, the risk of accidental harm and, and death to someone who was not prescribed that is really uh, significant. Okay. Um, kind of following up on that, some folks in chat have said that they have heard before that um, you should maybe take those types of medications back to the pharmacy as a recommendation from their um, their township because unless the local... sorry I'm so yeah. sorry so unless your pharmacy has a take back program which means it is it is a receptacle in the pharmacy that is um, organized through a take back program unless they have that a pharmacy cannot take that back that's not something that we can dispose of ourselves okay. All right, and it sounds like somebody mentioned something you meant, you said earlier that uh, their local police department will usually accept those expired medications too. Yeah. So that could be another outlet. Mm -hmm. Good. I put myself on mute, did me too. Okay, so um, moving on, I think you, um, you briefly said something about um, pill boxes. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of people um, choose to store their medication and organize their medication in a pill box. Is there anything um, that Giant can do with to help with that? I've heard that maybe you can get one free from the pharmacy yeah. or if you want to chat about that. Mm -hmm. So most, if not all of our Giant pharmacies have free pill boxes. So this is mine. Um, it says Giant Pharmacy on there and it's Sunday through Saturday. Um, this is big enough for me to have my regular medications and my vitamins. They're nice, big wells. Um, so it's an, a simple one well per day, um, seven day pill box. And that just helps keep me on track. I fill it every Monday. So I filled it today. It's completely full with all my meds. Um, and, you know, let's be honest, like sometimes the day just gets away from you and you can't remember if you took your medicine or not. It happens to me all the time. So I know if I go to my pill box and the pills are still in there, then I forgot to take them. And I know that I, you know, I have to take them. So for me, it's a really good reminder um, tool so that I can stay on track with my medication. Like I said, this is a simple one. This is just, you know, one, one well per day. If you're on a more complicated medication regimen where you have to take things two times or three times a day, um, this might not do it for you. Uh, there are some that they're not free, but um, we can order them for you or we have them in stock where there would be like four wells or an AM and a PM. So it would be seven days, but there would be an AM and a PM or even like morning, noon, afternoon and evening or bedtime. So um, they're just really helpful to keep you on track with your medication. And you know, if you're filling it a week in advance, like I almost reached the end of one of my prescriptions today. So I have to call the pharmacy and I have to get that refilled. So it's a nice reminder to keep my refills on track as well. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, do you have any suggestions about staying on track with your refills? Um, yeah. making sure you get them in a timely manner. So I'm sure the pill box helps. On top of that, um, our pharmacies have a medication synchronization program. So we can sync your medication if you're on a lot, or even if you're on like a few, we can sync your medications so that they get filled all at the same time. So you don't have to make multiple trips. I mean, how many times have we like been there on a Monday and you get a call on Thursday that something else is ready for you? So we can sync them all together at once. You can pick them up once a month or once every three months. Um, and we, you know, we'll send you reminders when it's 
read when you're ready to um, come and pick them up, ask if there's been any changes. So if that's something you're interested in, visit your giant pharmacy and see if there's something that they can help you with there. Yeah, that's really awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't know you guys could do that. I should yeah. tell my gram because I feel like she's always in that boat of, well, I have to yeah. get a ride over there to get my next prescription and stuff. So that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. um, a question in chat of, if you forget your morning pills and realize it when you take your nightly pills, should you take your morning pills or just wait until tomorrow? So it depends on what it is, right? So if it's a once a day medication and you were supposed to take it in the morning um, and you realized at night that you didn't take it, you, you can probably go ahead and take that dose. If it's something that you take two times a day and you miss the morning dose and you're at your evening dose, skip that morning dose and just take the evening dose and start again in the morning with your morning and your evening, if that makes, if that makes sense. Um, there's some medications, there's a few of them out there that you want to make sure you take at the same time every day. And if you're on those, you know what they are. Um, and you don't want to kind of and you want to skip it and just move on. Okay. I, you broke up there, at least for me for a minute, Dana, just I'm at sorry. the very end. Um, My VPN just cut off. I think that's why. Oh, okay. okay. So just um, to reiterate, if you um, are too close to your next dose, skip it and move on. But if it's a morning dose and you don't have to take it until the next morning and you realize it later in the day, you can take, you can take it later if you want. Okay, great. Okay, so that is all of the questions that, that we had planned for you guys. Um, but you guys have been great in chat, giving us a lot of other um, things to talk about. Um, does anybody else have any additional questions before uh, we say goodnight? While we're waiting, um, just in case, I wanna extend a big thank you to you, Dana. Uh, it's always great to partner with the pharmacy team. So it sounds like um, people really enjoyed this. Lots of great information, lots of good takeaways. So um, thank you so much for that. Is there yeah. anything else that you would like to say, Dana? I don't think so. Um, just, you know, if you go to a giant to shop and you don't use our pharmacy, just go and make friends with the pharmacist. We always love to meet new people. Even if you're not our customer, if you have questions, Pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare professional. We're there for you. And honestly, we um, enjoy coming to the counter and, and answering questions instead of, you know, counting pills and slapping labels on bottles on the back. So go make friends with your giant pharmacist. Um, you might learn something. We love to, we love to help you, even if you don't get your prescriptions filled with us. Yeah, I would, um, I would agree with that statement. Um, our uh, head of well-being, uh, for the dietitian team, uh, his history is actually that he is a pharmacist. And just this morning, I messaged him and I was like, hey, uh, what would you recommend for seasonal allergies? Because I've tried them all. So, yeah. you know, and, and he was very happy to take the time to, to give his insights to that. So I would agree that all of the pharmacists um, with Giant are very open to that. Um, some folks in chat are saying that some hospitals have drop boxes for medicine as well. Very possible, yeah. Um, and somebody made a comment also that her giant was uh, her giant pharmacist was a lifesaver during COVID. So Aww. that is very sweet, and I definitely believe that for sure. So that's great. That's so nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, we are at the end. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, feel free to email me and I can get in touch with Dana. But thank you for being with us tonight. Dana, thank you. And Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hope that everyone has a great rest of your evening. Bye, guys.